Hey, it's Dry Bear. The release of Wild Hearts is almost upon us. And if you haven't been checking out this game, you should be because it looks awesome. It is a hunting genre style game where you are a human sized person, man, lady, and you're trying to hunt these massive creatures. And it's in the kind of same genre as uh, plenty of those things. Monster Hunter was the first, but there's plenty of them out there. And you're harvesting materials and making new gear and weapons from it. But today, I'd like to get you started by talking about all the weapons that exist in Wild Hearts and maybe help you figure out which one you're going to play. As always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Come by and hang out. Starting with the mall, which is basically just this giant great hammer. There's some cool animations with this one that make it really satisfying to play with. And unlike the hammer in some of the other hunting style genre, you get to utilize the tech that exists in Wild Hearts to, to scale yourself up. You can jump up onto a platform, jump back down. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do that amplify a slow weapon like the Maul. So if you're looking for big, big damage numbers and just straightforward clobber them, I would say Maul is definitely there. Uh, it has a kind of a mixture of like great sword and, and hammer uh, in the way that it plays and the way that it moves. But again, because you can utilize the tech in Wild Hearts, it opens up a lot of really interesting opportunities that you wouldn't normally get with a weapon that's this slow and this limiting so that you can have some really cool extreme moments with the ball. So if you're looking for big numbers, this is the weapon for you. Next is the cannon or the hand cannon. This one is a lot more than just a uh, heavy bow gun. There's a lot of really cool aspects to this. You have some long range attacks. You have some buffs and amplifiers. You can light it on fire. And you actually get a meme beam, which you'll be able to see when you put it in. You actually just do a giant laser beam that explodes afterwards. So not only do you have these extra buffs and utilizations, you manage meter. There's a resource that you have to look at as well. And after looking at this weapon and seeing it and, and, and messing with it, I would say that this weapon functions much more. If you're someone who likes having more brain uh, power rather than power in your fingers, like you plan out your fights, you're more strategic, you have to use your brain cells to put it all together and you're keeping track of multiple things, then the cannon uh, is definitely for you. Next is the claw blade. And if you're a fan of Attack on Titan, this might be the weapon for you. It functions kind of similarly like the omnidirectional gear does. You have these two blades that are in the claw blade effect, which is really fast. You have tons of aerial movements, but you actually have a grappling hook that you can tether yourself to the target. And you can actually increase your movement speed in air, adjust your momentum and reposition, which means you're actually going up into the air, moving around, diving in. It's very aerial. It's very quick. It's very flashy. The claw blade is a ton of fun. So if you're looking for fast, uh, get in, slice them up, get out and being able to control and get an aerial view, especially on some of the beasts like the boar here, which is super large. Uh, maybe the claw blade is exactly what you're looking for. Next up is the Nodachi, which is this big boy sword. There's actually one bigger in the game, but it's not a core weapon. It's something that transforms. So this is kind of your standard big sword, your buster sword. However, this one functions a little bit differently than some that you may have experienced before because it's actually quite versatile. You have charge up attacks that you can wind up and hit. Unlike the hammer, which is just big bonk, there's a little bit more give and take and some planning that goes into using the Nodachi properly. So if you like big numbers, but you want a little bit more than just bonk bonk, maybe the Nodachi is exactly what you're looking for. You have some wind up, you have to manage your stamina. And when you get everything just right, there's some cool flourishes that make this weapon feel amazing. Next is the Karakuri Katana. And this one functions as a Katana in its base state. It does have a transformation, which is really cool, but it's quite flexible. It's short to medium range. There's some really good defensive options and some flexibility in its base state, but then you can charge up the Karakuri Katana and then transform it into a whip blade, kind of like a bleach style uh, separating blade that whips forward and slices. So if you like having that transformation moment of like building up and playing core gameplay and transforming and unleashing huge attacks that feel and function differently than your core rotation of doing damage, then the Karakuri Katana is exactly what you're looking for. Next is the weapon that has me the most excited, which is the Karakuri Staff. So this is your, your weapon that changes into different states and, and reconfigures physically 
and it's super interesting. So it's base state, it is a staff, but then based on the combos that you use, you use an acti active button into a transformation button, and you can charge up the transformation state to unleash its final state, and you have five different weapons built into this one. It's a little bit later into the story when you unlock it, but it's super cool once you master it. You have a long staff form, you have a pike, which is like a spear, a long spear, it transforms into a giant shuriken. You have a twin fang form. And once you're fully charged up, you can bring out the massive giant sword form, which is this ridiculously oversized sword that does crazy damage for the duration that you have it in that configuration. If you like uniqueness and very, uh, you know, very novel gameplay, then this is definitely the weapon you're going to want because it has so many different ways that you can utilize it. Next is the bow, and it's exactly what you expect it to be. It is traditional go bow gameplay. You have some nice planted effects where you can actually turn it up. You do have aerial effects that you can use for the tech that you can have in the game. So you jump on the platform, get some air or get some boosts and use that aerial attack to get an advantage. And you have plenty of AOE effects as well, which can hit multiple areas on the monsters that you're fighting. So the bow gives you that flexibility of range. You actually are quite mobile with some good movement, some good defense and survivability on top of it. You're not locked in, but you also have some bursty high damage options that will lock you in place. But when you use them just right, they feel really good. So if you're looking for that traditional bow gameplay with some flourishes on top, and some burst damage at range, then bow is exactly what you're looking for. And lastly, we have the bladed Wagasa, which is this bladed fan that you use. And this one is probably the coolest to look at when you play it right. It is the only weapon in the game that has a parry, so you can use it to parry oncoming attacks, and those parries will beef up your weapon to deal more and more damage. So the more comfortable you get with it, the more flexible you come, you can actually get faster and faster with it, and you can also parry. So it's just, it's one of those blockbuster style weapons that when you get it right, it looks so cool. It's so much fun to watch. And you can, you, there's so many openings that you create just by utilizing it and learning it. So if you want that weapon, that just means you can stay in the enemy's face, in the monster's face for as long as possible. You can show off, you can embarrass them, you can taunt them, and you can just really, the more, the better you play, the more it scales. This is definitely the weapon that you're looking for. And those are all the weapons available in Wild Hearts. Let me know if you're excited about this game. There's some really cool, unique changes that they made to make this game stand out on its own. So I'm super excited to give it a shot, and I hope you are too. As always, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Come by and say hi. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content, link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.